Ever wonder what suddenly convinced Kerbals to go to space? In this story, it's an ill-fated visitor from another planet. Finally, after a long walk across the surface, they encountered another life form. A Kerbal, who was shocked to see him. Of course the Kerbal ran, and the visitor followed him. Typical. Eventually they stopped to talk, and the Kerbal learned of the visitor's epic fight against the Space Kraken, and that the sky wasn't just one giant, big, boring LCD screen. He eventually eagerly agreed to help the visitor get back to space, although the visitor wasn't quite sure he understood how hard that actually would be. Oddly enough, the Kerbals had these buildings just lying around, unused, perhaps from an earlier era. Well, they seemed to suit the space interest quite well, so they just moved right on in. Now, in this series, the Kerbals have a lot of mods to help and hinder their journey into space. More on that later, but the full list will be on my Discord server if you are interested today. Pico Kind works off a career mode, so money and science are both vital for success, along with reputation. So, losing or not feeding Kerbals is probably not a winning strategy. The names of the initial Kerbals are after channel supporters. I'd like to personally thank you, and for that we have the following. The Visitor, whose name is Prime. We have Cedric, Pico, Emily, and Zipper Kipper, who, despite the initial fear of the Visitor, decide to join up as a pilot anyway. Not sure that was wise. They're also starting with a zeroed out tech tree, and we can't see beyond the next node. With all the mods that have been installed, this is going to make an element of surprise slash difficulty because the Kerbals will not be sure exactly where equipment is. Finally, the Kerbals will have contracts to fund their ventures into space in order to return Prime home. Let's grab the obvious first one and let the Kerbals do their thing. Apparently their thing is to reconstruct the damaged pod Prime arrived in and fit it on top of a metal tube full of explosives. This is clearly the correct and only way to space, but just in case it's not, they also spam the entire planet's worth of science experiments on the top. Good job, guys. So before even having time for a light snack, Prime once again finds himself in the pilot seat. Unsure of exactly what is about to happen, he is starting to question the sanity when the Kerbals on the ground control slips and hits the remote ignition button anyway. Yeah, that is not the sound of a happy Kerbal.
but at least the parachute worked, and he didn't explode on landing this time. It was a decent science grab, and Prime got some much-deserved ribbons as well. Using the cache of science points, the Kerbals were able to unlock several research nodes, although it looks like a pretty random selection process at this point. Some more contracts came in. Goody, but our initial contract didn't clear. That's annoying, but it should fix itself in the next launch. For launch 2, it was decided that a more point capsule should be used and actual rocket fuel rather than last year's leftover fireworks. Tall and thin for the win, right? While Prime is resting from his initial ordeal, Emily's up to the plate for the second ever launch. And we have liftoff. Oh, and did I mention about the reliability and mean time between failures? Yeah. Fortunately for Emily, she had enough time to eject the explosive fuel canister and deploy the parachute, although the launch port system activation wasn't perfect. Nor was the landing. Not even sure what exploded there. Quick jump out for a bit more science. Might as well make the failure worth it. The science gathered was enough for another node for sure, but more importantly, it cleared our first contract so we could actually accept that the Kerbals are going into space. Or at least that's the plan. Some additional modification to the rocket, removing the science payload in favor of more fuel to get more altitude, we also added a heat shield just in case. Zipper Kipper is up to the launch pad for the third launch. Will he have the honor of being the first Kerbal in space? Let's find out. So far so good. Welcome to space. Horribly suborbital, but the Kerbals will take it, along with a bit more science, with the few instruments they snuck on the back of the rocket. Sneaky little buggers. Now the easy part, right? Coming back down. Oh my, that was unexpected. I guess there's an aerodynamic model installed. Far out. But Kipper Zipper managed to land safely with a nice comfortable landing assist. A mod that actually helps. Kerbals immediately spent their science, this time focusing on building larger rockets, and hopefully getting them safely back home again. Kerbals grabbed the orbital contract, a decent amount of reward, but more importantly, this contract will open up space for them once it's achieved. There's also a pug contract on the launch pad. Easy money, right? PicoCraft is retrofitted with larger tanks. This is all about part count now. Also, in the retrofit, it's upgraded from a single stage to a two stage rocket to hopefully make the orbit easier. However, the small engine on the second stage hasn't been used yet, so its reliability is frightfully low. So a quick engine test fire is proposed before the actual fourth launch. Well, the engine failed, but Reliability will be improved, so best that happened here rather than at the edge of space. Final preparation is to install and set up a launch abort system correctly this time, so we can activate it at a moment's notice, if we knew what the button to activate the abort system was. Probably should check that out at some point. Protogen and Pico are up to the pad, excited for the first true orbital flight attempt.
And the main ignition has misfired, reduced to only gambling. Well, this is a dangerous situation, but fortunately, we have that launch abort system we just installed. Let's see if it actually works. Huzzah! A successful abort. Well, again, not to waste a test flight failure, and because the view outside of the capsule is so nice, Protogen jumps out to quickly grab a little bit more science. Okay, so we jump right back in the next launch with Solaire and Cedric, as the last rocket should have worked except for that failed engine. Oh dear, someone did not check their math. The thrust to weight ratio isn't high enough to actually lift the rocket off the ground. Oh, what a dangerous and embarrassing situation to be in. But once enough fuel had been burned off, the rocket finally started to climb. Whew! Miko and second stage ignition went off without a hitch. The main issue now, is there enough delta V left in the tank to reach orbit after that slow start? So they didn't quite reach orbit. I guess this will now be a decent test. Hopefully that conical heat shield will do what the label on the tin said. Keep the descent more stable than a regular heat shield. Oh no, the capsule's actually sinking. And the water pressure just caused it to explode. Implode. Great. So unfortunately we're down two Kerbals. I decided to take a break until sunrise to allow some Kerbals to recruit for their next flight attempt and promptly forgot about the rocket that needed rebalancing. Prime and Pico had better land on the land this time. the Kerbals took a more aggressive angle of attack, trading the vertical height for horizontal speed. I guess Prime knows a bit about rocketry. However, Pico and Prime also failed to reach orbital velocity and had to make an uncontrolled re-entry back into Kerbin. Oh no, that's a lot of blue under them. Better get ready to recover that capsule on the surface. Recovery's not working! I'm gonna EVA option, hopefully this works. Okay, not prime. Now for Pico, come on. Okay, now I'm annoyed. Let's recover Prime and see if we can fix that cursed rocket. So after some thinking, the plan here is to add some boosters to the rocket so that the launch, the engine, isn't just hovering the rocket on the pad. We want vertical velocity, however the boosters are new, it's a risk. Emily and Zipper, we knew thee well. And launch. Oh no, one of the boosters just failed. Um, eject the other one to balance out the thrust vector. Woo! Looks like didn't need to abort. And off they go. 
Well, the boosters, despite their failure, actually managed to do what was required, and the two Kerbals and their fearless spacecraft actually managed to reach orbit with just enough fuel left in the tank for them to fire retrograde in return, but not before a victory lap around Kerbin. Now, since we are in orbit, we can guide our return vector a bit so they will land over ground and not the ocean. No more sinking for us in this ride! Seriously, guys, that wasn't my fault. Well, technically, the Kerbals did reach orbit as promised in this episode. Cost us five brave Kerbals, but due to a fluke, I'm going to call Mulligan on this. The lost Kerbals are only MIA and not KIA, so I'm going to cover these wayward souls and then rectify the game settings so that going forward, the stakes for the Kerbals are real. Because next episode, the Kerbals have chosen to go to Mun. We are going to need a lot bigger rockets and... Way more Kerbals.